Uh-oh, I think we've got a problem. Oh, sh So, Paul, what have we done? Well, we've spent about two hours on a very cold February morning getting a Mark III Escort started, just so that we could drive it onto a recovery truck, take it away to its new owner. We've done a little part exchange, haven't we? What have we uh, gone up in the world a little bit? Yeah, we traded our 1.3L Escort. But what have we gone for? A gear? Something a bit posh? Yeah, it's a bit posher. So it's a big British saloon. It's a Bentley Turbo R. The majesty of a Bentley Turbo R. Basically, we've done what we always advise people never ever to do, and indeed we've done what every Rolls-Royce and Bentley specialist I've ever spoken to has said not to do. We've gone and bought a Turbo R, sight unseen, over the internet. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? This was a 91,000 pound car in 1989. Well, we're missing a headlamp cover. I've done a little bit of research already. These are about 22 pounds for a used one. So that's a tip of the iceberg of spending, isn't it? That can start there. We've got a little bit of uh, sort of surface rust on these headlamp bezels. I think that's probably not too expensive to sort. Maybe just a bit of elbow grease might fix that. It is a little bit dirty because the chap who delivered it to us uh, had to drive it here simply because at 2.4 tons, it was too big to fit on his transporter. These are off-road tires, basically. We've got Pirelli Scorpions. They're, the, the, cho the choice of a 4x4 owner, so those really belong on a Shogun, not on a Turbo R, but they are at least black, round and legal. This side, the body works pretty good actually, and we've got a little bit of um, the sort of oxidation corrosion uh, going on uh, around here. I think this little uh, spat here could do with replacing. I bet that's not expensive, although you do have to wonder what, what it might conceal. <laughs> One of, the, one of the specialists I spoke to a while back said a lot of these cars have been knocked on the corner simply because they're so big. So this is no surprise. Um, and I happen to know that uh, you can get these parts. So that's fine. Get a few bodies in here. Sadly, all this uh, wizardry is powered by something you'd find in a Metro. The boot is aluminium, so it's, um, it's oxidized quite badly and the paint's flaked off, but um, that is hardly the end of the world. I've got a little bit, a bit more uh, bubbling under the door handle here. And there's a little bit under here as well. I don't think any of that is alarming, actually. I don't think it's bizarre. I'm saying that now, and then later on, we'll talk to someone who knows their stuff and they'll tell us just how much we need to worry. So the interior, <laughs> it's pretty nice. Could probably do with a bit of coloring and cleaning, um, but it's not split. The piping doesn't seem to have split and the, the leather itself is fine. Um, we've got a, a Blaupunkt Bamberg top of the line cassette player. Michael Crawford performs Andrew Lloyd Webber. That may not be staying there. Uh, twin tone horns that we can select and we can select between the lights in the mirror and the map lights and these clunky chrome knobs here are all for the aircon. So yeah, we've got a lot to play with. Uh, electric seats you've got in the 89 models. Memory seats, in fact. What do I spy there? We've got something absolutely tremendous. Look, we've got a fixed portable Motorola. I don't think we're gonna get uh, any calls on that. What about even the headliner looks good? Yeah, it doesn't uh, smell of uh, uh, stale smoke or anything, does it? And we've got a, a good history here in this extensive book. It's a low mileage car, this one. It's done 47,310. So that is why we bought it, actually. Here she is. Oh. All six and three quarter litres of her. Turbocharged as well. Rolls-Royce was always very coy about power figures in this era. They always just described it as being adequate. But when they sold the cars on the German market, the authorities required them to disclose the actual power figure. So I think this one is something like 350, 380, something like that. So it's, um, it's, it's enough. And under bonnet sort of quilting. First impressions then, I think we've bought a presentable and quite outwardly quite an honest car is what I'm gonna say for now. Later on, we're gonna take it to a guy who knows a little bit more than me about these cars. And he can tell us just how right I am or how very wrong. Right, well, we've had this Turbo R all of half an hour and we're now setting off on a 66 mile journey around the M25 
uh, we're going to see Nigel Sandell, the respected Rolls-Royce and Bentley specialist, and one of the many people who told us that the first thing you should do when you're buying one of these cars is not to buy one without an inspection by a professional, and certainly not to buy one sight unseen over the internet. So we'll see what he makes of our purchase. Perhaps we'd better listen to a bit of Michael Crawford playing Andrew Lloyd Webber. It's not really my thing, to be honest. I haven't driven one of these cars for a while, and it's funny how they remind you of an older Range Rover, really. You sit so high up, and they do feel like a massive beast when you first get in them. Quite fitting, really, because we've got this off-road tyres anyway. Just adjust my electric seat, and it works. Well, I've done a couple of miles and it's certainly uh, pretty quiet and relaxed, I'll give it that much. All I can hear is a slight creaking of leather. There's no clonking and banging from the suspension or anything like that. So, first impressions, pretty good. Seems to drive pretty straight. With the sun shining and the Bentley looking good, things were going well. And then they weren't. Oh, I think we've got a problem. We've got the charge warning light on and the ABS light. So I think we're going to have to pull over. This certainly explains why the charge warning light came on and the ABS light. So i um, not entirely sure what to do now. Probably head back to our company car park, I think. So to answer the question, what could possibly go wrong with buying a cheap Bentley? Yeah, this. <laughs> Stay tuned for more adventures.